subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Headlines these days say that India should prepare for a severe winter this year, and scientists and weather experts say it has something to do with what's called a La Nina. Weather forecasts have predicted that the months of January and February in particular could bring among the coldest winters the country has seen in years. The cold may only start to decline by March when the La Nina is slated to disappear. But what is the La Nina, which is responsible for driving this change? This video seeks to answer just that question. My name is Simran Sirur and you're watching Tipping Point. La Nina is a Spanish word that means little girl. But to understand the origins of the name, it's important to learn about El Nino or little boy first. And no, these names don't refer to people. On the coast of Peru around the late 1800s, South American fishermen noticed that some years around December, waters were warmer than they usually were. Since it happened around Christmas, they nicknamed this phenomenon El Nino which when capitalized means Christ child. The La Nina, simply put, is the opposite of an El Nino and causes the eastern Pacific surface temperature to cool, but it wasn't discovered until the 1980s. When neither an El Nino nor a La Nina occur, it's called a neutral phase. All these are part of the ENSO, or the El Nino Southern Oscillation, which is a scale measuring sea surface temperatures and pressures in the tropical Pacific Ocean. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but the El Nino and La Nina are among the most important climate phenomena on Earth because they can influence weather patterns across the globe. So how do they work? Under normal circumstances, winds across the equator of the Pacific Ocean blow from east to west. These are called trade winds because they're persistent, reliable, and generally move in this direction during the neutral phase. These trade winds bring warm, moist air and warm sea surface temperatures towards the western Pacific, which is close to countries like Papua New Guinea, Australia and Japan. When warm waters move towards the west, it keeps the central Pacific Ocean cool. But an El Nino changes things. From time to time, around the months of December, January and February, the trade winds weaken and don't carry the warm surface temperatures all the way to the western Pacific Ocean. Instead, the surface temperatures of the central and eastern Pacific Ocean around Peru and the Galapagos Islands warms. I spoke to Dr. Raghu Murtagutte, research faculty in atmospheric and oceanic sciences with the University of Maryland about why this is significant. And this is what he had to say. Why do we care about El Nino if it is happening in the ocean? Because when you move such large rainfall amounts and heat source, hmm. it is the heat that drives the weather and climate. Hmm. Um, so when you drag that heat from the west to the east, you also create perturbations in temperature and rainfall all over the world. Like in the monsoon typically gets weaker during an El Nino. Uh, East Africa will get more rain. Mm. Um, the U.S. will get more storms on the West Coast and so on and so forth. So those are called teleconnections. By the same token, La Nina means when the trade winds get stronger than normal, mm. more cold water is brought to the surface and water is pushed further to the west, so waters in the west get warmer and they are more crunched up against New Zealand and Australia, I mean, sorry, New Guinea and Australia, and you get more rain over uh, parts of Australia and India and uh, Indonesian uh, belt and continent and elsewhere, and west coast of US and South America get very, very dry. Like Dr. Murtagutte explained, during a La Nina, surface temperatures of the tropical Pacific Ocean cool more than normal in the central and eastern Pacific regions around Peru and the Galapagos. Since warm water is pushed by strong winds towards the western Pacific, those countries tend to experience more rainfall and harsher winters, depending on which season the La Nina sets in. This is how Mahesh Palavat, chief meteorologist at SkyMet Weather, describes it. The reason means when sea surface temperature over eastern Pacific increases and uh, the, the western Pacific and Indian Ocean and we have Bengal, uh, they witness a cooler temperature, sea surface temperature and uh, in the event of cooler sea surface temperature, uh, this uh, cloud formation uh, or you can say the water vapor, rising of water vapor or cloud formation uh, remains on lower side leading to uh, drop light conditions or below normal monsoon. Okay. And during La Nina conditions, sea surface temperature over Western Pacific and Indian Ocean and Bay of Bengal usually uh, remains uh, above normal, leading to formation of cloud and consecutive rainfall. 
in the event of monsoon conditions we can say that uh, south east asia including uh, that uh, uh, sri lanka uh, india uh, bangladesh uh, myanmar uh, thailand so uh, uh, all these uh, countries usually mm-hmm. get affected and uh, rainfall uh, remains above average or uh, sometimes mm-hmm. surplus rainfall during la nina years and uh, opposite in the uh, al nino years the la nina comes soon after india witnessed heavy rainfall through september when the monsoon should have actually been on its way out there is some speculation that the la nina that is setting in now had started to form when the monsoon typically withdraws around september 17th But this year the monsoon season began to withdraw only around the 8th of October which is a whole 19 days later than normal. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration of the US officially announced the La Niña on 14th October. They've called it a double dip meaning it's the second consecutive La Niña the world has seen in a row. According to their data La Niñas occurred both between 2020 and 2021 and 2017 and 18. This year the NOAA says there's an 87% chance of a La Niña occurring from December 21 through to February 2022. The El Niño and La Niña are natural changes to the Earth's climate. As long as the sun exists and the earth rotates, the world is likely to continue seeing El Niños and La Niñas punctuated by neutral phases. But global warming could change this in ways that we can't yet see. Since 1850, global temperatures have risen 1.1 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Greenhouse gas emissions have caused the atmosphere to warm and as a result, the world has been seeing more extreme weather events than usual. According to the IPCC report, if temperatures cross 1.5 degrees, which they very well could by 2040, things will only get worse with more frequent and intense heat waves, droughts and precipitation affecting different parts of the world. We don't have enough data about how global warming has affected natural climatic phenomena like El Niños and La Niñas. Yeah, so El Niño and La Niña and monsoon, these are all for natural variabilities or internal variabilities. To the extent that they are natural variability, the question is not whether uh, these are unrelated to global warming. The real question is how is global warming going to modulate or affect natural variability itself so everything natural variability is now happening in a warmer uh, atmosphere warmer ocean so global warming is changing the atmospheric temperature atmospheric humidity ocean temperature and so on so we are putting more energy into the uh, atmosphere because warmer atmosphere holds more moisture moisture condenses release of energy ocean warmer ocean can evaporate more easily more water uh, and so on so it is not a question yes el nino and la nina are natural variability and they will happen as long as sun is there and as long as earth is rotating and we have these contrasts of tail winds and so on hmm. we will have monsoon we will have el nino and we will have la nina hmm. the question is how they change in their intensity how strong they become in their frequency how they how often they happen and uh, whether they last longer or shorter so their duration for now all we can do is gear up for a harsh winter